Hello friends and welcome to another video lecture on thermodynamics. This is topic R1.2, energy cycles and reactions. We're going to focus just on Hess's law. Our guiding question, how does application of the law of conservation of energy help us to predict energy changes during reactions? Understanding is just this one about Hess's law. Our objectives are super quick and easy. We're going to describe Hess's law and then apply Hess's law. So what even is Hess's law? Hess's law states that the enthalpy change from a reaction is independent of the pathway between the initial and final states. What does that mean? That means that if I have these reactants A and I'm turning them into these products B, I could go straight from A to B. Or we could turn A into C and then turn C into B. Or we could turn A into D and then D turns into E and then E turns into B. Regardless of what pathway we take to get from A to B, the total enthalpy change is going to be the same. So let's say that delta H1 is equal to negative 50 kilojoules. Delta H2 is negative 20 kilojoules. Delta H3 is negative 30 kilojoules. If I add together H2 and H3, negative 20 kilojoules and negative 30 kilojoules, I go from A to C to B, the total enthalpy change is going to be negative 50 kilojoules because it's negative 50 kilojoules. What if delta H4 is equal to negative 30 kilojoules and delta H5 is negative 15 kilojoules? What must delta H6 be equal to? Again, the whole thing has to add up to negative 50, just like this added up to negative 50. So if I have negative 30 and then negative 15, this delta H6 must be equal to negative 5 kilojoules because negative 30 plus negative 15 plus negative 5 is going to get us back to that negative 50. It doesn't matter what our pathway is, the enthalpy change is going to be the same. And what's super cool about this concept is that we can use it to calculate the enthalpy of reactions that we maybe can't measure in the lab. So here we're looking at hydrogen gas and oxygen gas producing hydrogen peroxide. For whatever reason, we cannot put this into a calorimeter. I cannot make this product and measure the temperature changes and use Q equals MC delta T. But maybe I can decompose hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen gas, and I can measure the delta H of that reaction. And then we can also figure out if I combust hydrogen and oxygen to make water, what the delta H of that reaction is. We're going to do some algebra and figure out how to turn these two equations into that equation. So I like to start at the beginning. It's a very good place to start. So here we have H2 gas. I want to find one of these reactants that's going to put H2 gas into the reactants. I have H2 gas in the reactants here. Unfortunately, I have two of them and I only want one of them. So I'm going to chop in half this whole entire reaction. So one half times two H2s is going to give me just one H2. Half times an O2, we're going to call it half an O2, which is kind of weird. We usually don't use fractions when we're balancing equations, but here in thermo, we do. And then we're going to have one half times two waters. That's going to be just one water. My delta H also has to get chopped in half. So my negative 600 kilojoules per mole are going to turn into negative 300 kilojoules per just that one mole instead of the two. So now I've got my H2, but I only have half an O2 and I need a whole O2. And I also right now have water in the products, but I need to put some hydrogen peroxide into the products. So I'm going to take a look at this other equation here. I've got that hydrogen peroxide that I need to put into my products, but right now it's in the reactants. That's not helpful. What I need to do is reverse my reaction. So instead of having H2O2 turning into H2O and O2, I'm going to flip the direction of my yield sign. So now I have O2 plus two H2Os producing two hydrogen peroxides. 
if we change the direction of the reaction, we have to flip the sign of the delta H. So my negative 200 kilojoules is now going to be a positive 200 kilojoules because I reversed the direction of the reaction. But wait, now I have O2 plus two H2Os yields two H2O2s, and my delta H is going to be a positive 200 kilojoules. Unfortunately, that's two hydrogen peroxides, and I only want one. So we're not done with this equation yet. We're going to have to take this whole thing and also chop it in half. So now we're going to have half an O2. One half times two waters is just one water. And then I'm going to have one half times two is only one H2O2. My delta H also needs to get chopped in half. So delta H is now going to be half of 200. That's only 100. So now I have all the pieces and the parts that I need. I've got my H2s. I've got my H2s. I've got my one H2O2s, that one H2O2s. And are you ready for the magic that is going to be our oxygen? we are going to add together this reaction and this reaction. So I'm going to take my H2s and my half an O2. I have run into the yield sign, so I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to pick up all of the reactants in that second equation, half an O2 and one water. I have run into my yield sign, so now I'm going to go back and pick up all the products from these two reactions. I've got one water, and that's the end of that one. And then here I have one hydrogen peroxide. Here's some magical algebra stuff that's going to happen. Half an O2 plus half an O2 is a whole one O2. There's that oxygen gas that I needed in that original equation. And also, I can subtract water from both sides of the equation. That's going to leave us with hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas is going to yield hydrogen peroxide, which is exactly that equation that we were hoping to get. To calculate my delta H, we're going to take the negative 300 that we had here and the positive 100 of that second equation. And negative 300 plus 100 is going to give us a total delta H of negative 200 kilojoules per mole. And that is the magic of Hess's Law. And another example. This time we're trying to figure out the heat of reaction or the enthalpy of reaction for the formation of methanol where we take the elements carbon and hydrogen and oxygen and we make this one methanol molecule. We have these three givens, these reactions that we do know the delta H is two. We are going to mix and match and manipulate those equations to turn them into that one so that we can find the delta H for that reaction. Again, I like to start at the beginning. It's a very good place to start. We're going to see some carbon here. I'm going to scan my reactions and find a match. There it is. So happily, that one carbon is already a match for the one carbon that I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite that guy so that it is easy for me to um, just kind of smash together with all the other ones. I'm dropping the state symbols, and that's okay because I don't have any different state symbols. If you had, let's say that we had methanol liquid here methanol gas here, you would want to keep all those state symbols because they'd be super important. But in this equation, this set of equations, it doesn't really matter. We can drop the state symbols. Again, we've got our carbon and oxygen making carbon dioxide. Our delta H for that is going to not have to change because I didn't change anything with that reaction. We're going to have a negative 394 kilojoules per mole. So we've got our carbon in place. I need two hydrogens next. I'm going to scan those reactions. And oh my goodness, how convenient is that? Two hydrogens sitting right there already in the reactants. So I don't have to do anything to this equation either. We're going to just add it to the list as is. 
delta H again is going to stay exactly the same, negative 572 kilojoules per mole. Now I've got my hydrogens in place. I'm not going to worry about oxygens yet because I've got a lot of oxygen here already. I'm going to focus on, I need a methanol in the products. And I'm looking at my equations and I see that I've got some methanol here. Two problems. Number one, there's two of them and I only want one. And also these two methanols are in the reactants and I need one in the products. So we're going to have to do two things to this equation. We're going to have to chop it in half because I don't want two methanols, I want only one. So we're gonna multiply the whole thing by one half. And also, I need to put my methanol into the products, and right now it's in the reactants. So we're going to flip the direction of the reaction. We are going to reverse the reaction. When you reverse the reaction, you have to flip the sign of the delta H. So now my negative is a positive, and we're going to chop the whole thing in half. So let's chop the whole thing in half. Two times a half of methanols are going to give me, because I reversed it, one methanol in the products. And also, one half times three, I have three halves oxygens in those products. My reactants, one half times two, I have one carbon dioxide and one half times four, two waters. So again, we just took the products and turned them into the reactants. We took the reactants and made them the products. We can do this by reversing the reaction. When you reverse the reaction, you have to change the sign. I used to have a negative. We turned it into a positive because we flipped the direction of the reaction. Now, my friends, Let's look at that delta H. We have a delta H for this reaction. It is going to be positive 1452, but I chopped it in half. So half of 1452 is going to be a positive 726 kilojoules per mole. Now we're going to add all three of these together. What do we get? Carbon and oxygen and two hydrogens and another oxygen and a carbon dioxide. Ooh, whoopsie, hold on. I made an arrow, that should be a plus sign. We're not done yet. And carbon dioxide, there it is, and adding still two waters. Now I've got all of my reactants. We can go to the other side of all the yield sign and talk about the products. We've got a carbon dioxide and two waters and a methanol, and three halves oxygen. What can we subtract from both sides? Well, I've got a CO2 and a CO2. We're gonna go ahead and cancel those guys out. I've got two waters and two waters. Goodbye, two waters. We have three halves of oxygen and one two, two oxygens. Two oxygens is the same thing as four halves oxygens. Four halves minus three halves of oxygens. Four halves minus three halves is only one half oxygen. So that guy's gone. Those guys are gone. We're left with one half an oxygen. Are you ready for this magic? One carbon, one carbon, two hydrogens two hydrogens, half an oxygen, half an oxygen. That's all we have left in the reactants. Everything else canceled out. One methanol, the only thing left in my products is one methanol. We did it, we made that equation. So now all we have to do is take our negative 394, add negative 572, and add positive 726. Handy dandy calculator says, negative 240 kilojoules per mole. Voila, here we have the delta H, the enthalpy of reaction for this reaction that we cannot put into a calorimeter, but we can still figure out what the energy change would be 
because we were able to take a slightly different route to that final equation. We can also sort out the equations that we can add together in Hess's law with diagrams instead of just a list of equations. So let's say that I want to get from methane and oxygen to carbon dioxide and water. But what I'm going to do first is actually convert my methane and oxygen into carbon monoxide and water and half an oxygen, then those are going to react to make my carbon, di carbon dioxide and water. So if the delta H of this first reaction is negative 607 kilojoules and delta H of that second step is negative 283 kilojoules, then you can probably guess that going from here all the way down to the end is going to be the sum of negative 607 and negative 283. And when we add negative 607 to negative 283, we're going to get a grand total of negative 890 kilojoules per mole. And this is going to be the delta H for the whole entire reaction, because here was step one and here was step two. Easy peasy. And here we have one more example of Hess's law. We're starting with some carbon and we're adding some oxygen to make carbon monoxide. I want to figure out what is this number one delta H of reaction. What I know is that if I add half an oxygen to that equation, my carbon and my half an oxygen, we're going to get carbon dioxide. And that has a delta H of negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. I also know that if I take carbon monoxide and I add to it half an oxygen, we can make carbon dioxide. And that's going to be negative 283 kilojoules per mole. So how can I use these two reactions, this one and this one, to make this one? Be careful. Don't go too simple. Don't be like, oh, we're just going to add negative 393.5 and we will add negative 283 and that will give us our final answer. That's not going to work, my friends, because notice the direction of this equation number three. It's going the wrong way. It's going the wrong way. We want to go from here to here. This guy's going the opposite direction. All we have to do is reverse the reaction. When we reverse the reaction, we change the sign of our delta H. Right now it's negative 283. We're going to make it a positive 283. And we are going to reverse the direction of that equation. And now I can just add because we're going the right ways. We're going from here around the long way to that final carbon monoxide. So I'm going to take my negative 393.5, 393.5, and I'm going to add to it positive 283. So 393.5, negative, add positive 283.0, and we get grand total delta H is going to be Hence, the anti-calculator says negative 110.5 kilojoules per mole. Again, all we had to do was reverse this reaction so that we could get from the beginning to the end. But because we had to change the direction of this reaction, we had to change the sign of this delta H from negative to positive, and then negative 393.5 plus positive 283 gave us that overall enthalpy of reaction, negative 110.5 kilojoules per mole. And in under 20 minutes, we did it. We finished our video lecture on Hess's law. We talked about applying the law of conservation of energy to predict energy changes during reactions. We described that Hess's law and we did oh so many calculations with it. Great work today.